and R. You've got it. And audio in three, two, one. You're live. Welcome to the Jeremiah Show. Am I still shouting? Am I shouting at you guys? I was shouting before. I didn't mean to. Let's let's uh, start off the show uh, with a proper introduction of our very special guest today, creators of the last blockbuster. I, I believe it's number two or number one. It's probably up to number one probably by now on Netflix. Uh, the guys can correct me, I'll, or maybe they'll just take the number one title. I think we'll just let people <laughs> about it. keep it there. What? I, yeah, why they change are the that? number one search for a movie on Netflix. I think I added to that uh, to Google's analytics there myself today. I was I searched everything. Was, I appreciate it. Need to kind of dig into it and see the behind the scenes. Well, I added to their analytics too. <laughs> well, we've got director Taylor Morden and writer Zeke Cam on today. So happy to have both of you here. Uh, and so I want to tell. Uh, yesterday I sat down. I've been trying to watch the movie over the last two weeks since it was. I saw the trailer. I put it in my my file for special movies or whatever they call wish list, mm -hmm. and been trying to get to it. But crazy busy day. Sat down finally last night, and I turned on the TV, uh, clicked Netflix, searched uh, <laughs> searched the, in my wish list there, and got the la pulled up the last blockbuster. And I couldn't help but think about how ironic it was that I did all of the above in 30 seconds. When I thought, when I think back to the process of getting and renting a video or a DVD and how, how we just take that for granted right now and how qu quick it is. And, um, but I do, I do miss the nostalgia of getting in the car and driving to the video store and walking down those aisles and knowing what you want, but it, but it usually wasn't there. It was checked out, but then going through those piles up at the front and usually you found it, you know, and making a mess and knocking over their stacks at, at the blockbuster counter. What was really cool yesterday is my sister moved back from the East coast into Santa Barbara and she was over and my brother was there and nobody sat down with me to watch it. I went in to watch it privately, but heads start peeking around the corner and everybody slowly moved into the living room <laughs> my brother who never sits through a movie sat through the whole thing uh and and we just enjoyed it you know and and, br and brought up you know he really got into the nostalgia of and i didn't know this about him of missing going to a video store and renting that and with his daughter and walking up and down the aisles uh, i remember so I, i'm going to tell a real quick story before we get into it with with our special guest today but we lived in a town in Spirit Lake, Idaho. It has a one street town, had a video store. It wasn't a blockbuster. Um, and you had to rent. We didn't have VCRs. We didn't have much money, but we didn't have a VCR. I mean, th I think they were priced really like six, seven, eight hundred dollars, maybe, maybe more. I don't remember. But you rented the even a blockbuster. It was like a suitcase. It was almost like that. Uh, the football that the president carries. <laughs> you, know, like, <laughs> you got this plastic case uh, and just. Uh, you know, you, you're like, I'm going to, I'm gonna, like, I can set up my own, set off my own rocket with this thing. And I, I, I remember the very first video. And I want to ask all of you guys, if you can remember as well uh, here in the show, the, the very first video that you watched or that you rented mine was Rambo. And it was really historic for me because it was also the very first rated R movie. My parents let me watch, <gasps> Oh my God. but they sat behind me on the couch. Of course, I was like in seventh grade and my mom would, put her hand her arms seemed like they were like long stretchy arms would get no matter where i positioned myself <laughs> she would get she would find my face and wrap put her fingers over my eyes every, oh time, my every time rambo killed somebody or you know there was a, a strip club scene i don't i don't know if there was in rambo but that Probably. happened yeah, that how happened. would you know your mom was covering your eyes <laughs> yeah how would i know um there is so much heavy nostalgia i love nostalgia i i miss the days of of us uh you know, just getting together at a dinner table or with your friends and family at a restaurant with, uh, you know, traditions, Christmas and Thanksgiving seemed to be this last year, you know, weren't the same. And I just, I love nostalgia. I love pop culture. I love this movie. Um, and, the, and obviously the rest of the world does too. There's so much heavy nostalgia for this blockbuster uh, cult following, I think you could say. And, and this, we're, we're talking about the last blockbuster, the movie, documentary film with our two special guests today, uh, Zeke Cam, uh, Taylor Morton, and, and uh, the, the process of making the movie. 
Uh, we're also going to talk about their podcast, uh, Zeke's podcast, and, and a whole lot of other things that they're working on. Um, okay, I'm almost finished here. So Zeke Cam is a 20-year Hollywood vet, filmmaker, producer, a marketing and product consultant. He's an award-winning filmmaker, best-selling author, and he's an accomplished inventor. I got to hear more about that. Taylor Morgan. You find that bio. <laughs> is that old? Is it not working? No, it's all true. <laughs> I told you. I, I was going to say, he does not He does not acknowledge any information. <laughs> he will neither confirm nor deny that information. It came to me in one of my old, uh, the, the VCR suitcases, and it came with top <laughs> secret documents. <laughs> it's true. I've just, you know, I've, uh, I've honed Owned what I want people to know me for, but that's uh, nice. Everyone can know me I, for Richard can edit out anything, you know. Uh, you got say. it. No, you got it. Well, fine. yes. Okay. Um, Taylor Morton is the director of the last blockbuster. He's a director and a producer. Uh, Scott, pick it up. Ska in the nineties in two thousand nineteen is another film. And you here's to that movie. That movie's so good. Yeah. Okay, I will. I, I, so you good. just. I, I didn't get to it. I, you're uh, calling me out on again. there. I'll be Which, honest. Say it, it again. Pick Which it one? up. Sky in the 90s. Okay. 2019. And uh, here's to life. The story of the refreshments. 2017. <laughs> I, 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 uh, that one I'm really interested in checking out for sure. All right. I'm going to just do one more thing. I'm going to set up the last blockbuster in case you haven't heard of it. But where have you been if you haven't? Black block, the last blockbuster is an upbeat fun-filled documentary about the rise and the fall of a corporate giant and how the manager of a small block town blockbuster franchise manages to outlast all of the rest that features interviews with comedians and celebrities adam brody I iona sky doug benson and uh paul Shear. God, you got a lot. The, the list goes on. Uh, director Kevin, Kevin Smith, Smith from Clerks. Yeah. yeah, really good to see him in that. Um, haven't seen him uh, for a long time. Clerks, Jay and Silent Bog. Bob, the last blockbuster follows Sandy Harding, the manager of the world's last remaining blockbuster in Bend, Oregon, as she reflects on the store's vibrant past and navigates the difficult task of keeping a video rental store open in the era of streaming taking us through the history and the subsequent rise and the fall of the franchise, the documentary reveals the real reason why Blockbuster went out of business. And uh, you say it's not Netflix, and, and I agree with it, but I, I bet they had a little bit to do with it. While celebrating the unique and the defining culture it created in the 80s and 90s, bring it back, bring back Blockbuster, but I probably won't go. <laughs> I'll probably still stay on my couch and stream. All right, so I just want to welcome you guys to the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Are you both in Bend, Oregon today? And is that hometown yeah. for both of you still? Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the show. Thanks for I, having us. You know, uh, <laughs> So I, I'll tell a little side story. Nicola Carpinelli, who you had on Zeke on your podcast, introduced us. We pulled you out of the phone and uh, we, we talked the other day. That was a lot of fun. Uh, let's talk about when you started the film, there were 12 remaining blockbuster stores open in the, you know, throughout the United States. Um, and then it was, there was one, one remaining. Did you change? <laughs> no. But a lot of stuff you, happened in between. <laughs> right. And that's, that's my question is you, you, you know, you, I, what was the original theme is obviously wasn't called the last blockbuster because it wasn't at that time, but what was the original and did the, the movie storyline change? It had to, but how did it change and how did you adapt to that? Well, Taylor? when we very first started, yeah, it was, um, I was just so curious, like, driving through town seeing the blockbuster sign and then finally stopping and going in and seeing not only where they open but like people are in there renting movies and i'm like i just get curious i'm like who the heck are these people i want to talk to every one of these customers and find out what went wrong in their life that they're still renting <laughs> 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 um, and then you know so it started it wasn't even necessarily going to be a movie um, until I brought Zeke in, like the very first time I just talked to Sandy and said, can I start bringing cameras here? I think this is a cool 
thing and people will care because I care. And she was like, why would anybody want to talk to us? You know, there's lots of blockbusters left and, and all that. So really the first interview with Sandy, which you can see in the movie was the first time she had ever been interviewed on camera before the whole world found out who she was. And she was so nervous and <laughs> didn't understand why anyone would care about this blockbuster video. Yeah. And, and it wasn't long after that, that they started closing. And I went to Zeke and was like, I think this is a movie about the last one of the last blockbusters. We should really, you know, I should stop messing around and we should make a movie out of this. And, and that, and was, that first yeah. night, that first yeah. night we actually said, let's call it the last blockbuster. We could see the writing on the wall. Yeah. Oh, you and, could, you could see oh, that yeah. was going to be the one, huh? Like, even well, we said like uh, one of I I think I what, said, one of us said let's call it the last blockbuster and the other one said what if it's not the last blockbuster and we were like who cares? <laughs> so, <laughs> well, eventually you probably saw the writing on the wall that there would be a last blockbuster, so you'd end up at one of them. Did you cover your yeah, bases within a month, with Alaska with, and right? We, we tried within a month. We were like, okay, it's definitely going to happen. We probably have about a what did we figure a year before yeah. they were going to be down to one. And it ended up being closer to like two and a half months, three months before. Yeah. I, wow. It's all kind of a blur. And we were wow. planning, we were definitely planning to go film in Alaska. Cause at that time when they were down to four, it was this store and Alaska. So the last few we were like, it's either going to be this one or one of the Alaska stores. It's definitely going to be one of the Alaska stores. Cause yeah, they don't have internet sure. and it makes yeah. sense that it would be them. So we were scheduled to go, film up there we had you know raised a little bit of money and figured out how we could get up to alaska and film and we we're like okay we're gonna go in like three weeks uh, but the owner is down here visiting so let's interview him here because that doesn't cost us any money and we'll just do that and while we were interviewing here him here he told us oh by the way we're closing the stores in alaska next week so yeah. oh, you're not gonna make it in time <laughs> And by the way, that answers the pressing question all of America wants the answer to, and now we know, do they have VCRs in Alaska? And the answer is yes. They do. <laughs> <laughs> when, they don't have Blockbuster anymore, but they have VCRs. Well, yeah, there you go. Do you think they still rent the, the VC? Well, I, no, no, there's not, no, not too many that rent. <laughs> do you think the last one rent the sheet rent? uh vcrs or is it dvd players no. now or do they even rent them now that's, that's all went, that went away yeah well you that can buy a dvd away. at seven a dvd player at 7-eleven for like six bucks so. <laughs> oh <laughs> no way <Yeah>. seriously <laughs> that's a, that's a joke. Seven, good uh, i'm very gullible do you, do, uh, hey taylor uh did uh, and Zeke, this question for both of you why do you think that that re this film has resonated so well with people I, may, I think primarily it, because we're because we're such great filmmakers. That, well, I mean, that uh, was going to say besides the obvious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I think if somebody less skilled had done it, and no one would have cared. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, uh, as soon as Taylor told me the idea <laughs> and said we have a blockbuster here in town, and I was like, "Really? I've seen the abandoned one." And he goes, "No, it's not abandoned. If you go in, it's open." I was like, what? It's open? <laughs> and I got very interested. And I I had I hadn't taken off a weekend in four years because I had so much work, so much I was doing so many films. And I had invited him over just to hang out because I was like, this is the start of my first week off in four years. <laughs> he picked me the before I hit play, he goes, Let me run this idea by you. And I thought he just wanted some feedback on something he was gonna do. I was like, Yeah, go for it. And he tells me, and he's like, would you want to do it? And I was like, hmm, <laughs> all right. Back off the couch and or yeah, back so on the couch. Three, three years later, I took a week off. Yeah. And, uh, and I just knew as soon as he mentioned it, I was like, okay, this is something that is, it's pop culture. Like it was so crazy popular. Um, like all the, the business part of me, the producer part of me was like, this checks all the boxes. And then the storyteller part of me was like, if we need, if we can find something in here that's meaningful, then those are the two, that's the perfect situation for me. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff I've worked on is just like pop or it's meaningful, but it's, you know, uh, 
more niche or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if I could, if I had to pick one or the other, I would pick that meaningful and niche. But when I can find something that combines both, that's, Mm -hmm. that's a joy as a producer, as a writer, as a, a filmmaker and a film lover, like to be able to do something that has so much recognition, everyone either knows what it is, has like an intimate memory of it, uh, you know, a physical but emotional connection to it, or they've heard of it. So mm. like, no one's gonna be, we're like, no one's gonna be scrolling through Netflix and not know, not have any idea what the movie's about. They yeah. instantly will know what it is even if there's still six left or four left when the yeah. movie comes out, you know, people will go, Oh, there's still four left. Well, that's interesting. I'll watch that. Yeah. You know, that's what I, I meant. Go ahead. No, I just going to say, I, I'm impressed by the cinematography, the sound effects, the music. I mean, we're talking Academy award here. I, I actually had a lot of fun watching it and I still have my blockbuster card. Richard still has popcorn stuck to his the front of his shirt from yesterday. <laughs> red, and my his, floors, his red vines die right. like around his legs. And I also have uh, sticky floors from the spilled sodas and uh, and mm-hmm. cotton candy. I, I love <laughs> the um, Zeke. Back to you were in the middle of the sentence. Do you remember what you were? Did you want to finish well, just, that up? It, it's like it was the perfect. I just kept saying I can't. My wife was like, no, you need to take time off. You've been working so hard. And I'm like, I can't pass on this. It's just, you yeah. know, as a filmmaker, I'm first a film lover. And like, I was like, maybe we can make something. And then the next day, I think it was the next day, I went into Blockbuster with my family uh, just to look around, you know, like going into mm-hmm. a museum that you have to go through a time portal just to visit the museum <laughs> of the thing. And we went in and uh, we were, I was waiting to meet Sandy because Taylor's like, you have to meet Sandy. She's amazing. She's the, the meaning of everything. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and my son's walking around and, you know, we, uh, he, my son loves movies too. He, he was seven at the time, but he, he walks into the children's section. He sees the DVDs and he'd never seen a DVD before. He'd heard of them, yeah. but he picks up a DVD and just instinctually he turns it over and he goes, there's stuff on the back. <laughs> and, I, and I felt like instantly, I felt like this movie is going to have stuff on the back. Yeah. This movie that yeah. we're going to make. And then I met Sandy instantly fell in love with her. She's so humble and just cares about fi- Like she said, she said, let's get your son back here after she talked to him for a few minutes, she really liked my son. I assume, I, I have the feeling she likes every kid. And she goes, let's bring him back here. I have a, a thing on the wall where I mark employees' heights. Oh, that's cool. You know, like you mark oh, your yeah. heights on the yeah, wall. Yeah. And she wanted to do that with my son. And I was like, oh my God. And I said to Taylor, if we can capture Sandy in a way that the audience loves, falls in love with her, like how we have, we're going to have a successful movie. Wow, and it's really satisfying that that's what's happening. Like yeah. you can see in people's comments, we've got big tough guys, like guys you'd be scared of if you turned around and they were standing there. <laughs> saying, I was crying my eyes out by the end of the film. Like that feels great. Yeah, it really is, and I love everybody loves a good underdog story. Yeah. And, and Sandy Harding, it's a that's a, a great storyline. I love. I think that was my my favorite. You know, besides remembering all of the nostalgia with all the great actors and, and commentators that you have in the film, you're really just watching the progress and got going, you're just kind of rooting for it. Like be, the, yeah. don't, don't go down, you know, fight, stand and fight you from, from uh, dish network to, you know, Viacom to all these, you know, big, big corporations. She's going to stay, she's going to stay, uh, stand and be standing still. Be and you know what? Standing. I actually think I am. I actually, I'm, I'm serious here that this could actually grow again. Because with the pandemic, eventually it'll be over and everybody's going to want to get together. Well, what a better place to go than Blockbuster to get together, even if it's just to mill around and look at, again, like you said, uh, uh, Jeremiah, the nostalgia. It should be a, uh, 
uh, an attraction at Universal Studios. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I okay, love it. we're going to take a real quick break. We're talking with uh, the creators of the last blockbuster. Go finish the show, finish the interview, then go to your couch or stay on the couch and go watch the <laughs> last blockbuster by uh, director Taylor Morton and writer Zeke Cam. We'll be right back after this message. All I'm right. Gonna, I'm going to do an ad here for them. Oh, okay. In between, if you want to just keep, Let me, keep me going. Let uh, me mark it here. Let me open it. Guys, good stuff. Thanks so much again for Let taking me, the time out. You. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Three, two, one. The last blockbuster movie on Netflix, but you can also get it on DVD and why not you do, do that? Because it's part of nostalgia. It's part of uh, culture, pop culture, and you need to have a copy of your very own. So go to the last blockbuster movie.com but you can also get it on bendblockbuster.com that's where we'd like you to go i'd like you to go that's where i got mine blockbuster bendblockbuster.com product slash last blockbuster movie pre-order okay uh it's a special edition so last blockbuster movie special edition 24.99 it's a special edition dvd blu-ray combo pack uh, for a limited time, you get the last Blockbuster DVD Blu-ray combo, and it's loaded with bonus goodies. Get your pop culture memorabilia film before the last copy is sold. Now at the last Blockbuster, again, it's bendblockbuster.com. Product, last Blockbuster movie pre-order. Richard will tighten that up and make me sound better. I only have one question on this movie that's available for $24.95. Can I get it in uh, in VHS format? Hang on one second. <laughs> Percy's got one. You can. Actually, they have some at lunchmeatvhs.com. Very uh, lunch meat. Lunch meat. I love it. Out. They're very cool. That's so cool. Table. Is that what are the bonus goodies? I couldn't find that on there. What are the bonus? That, is that what oh, you get? Oh, man. So if you know, you're watching the video here, uh, Zeke's holding up. Uh, and it's even blue and yellow. Oh, man. Love the colors. I loved the caps she was making. That was so cool. Those uh, head, I'm the caps. One. Yeah. Yeah, you are, aren't you? Yeah. Very, right. I just love that. That let's, was so cool. Let's and my come wife, back. Let's put this on recording. All right, here we let's go. Let's record this. Three, two, one. You're live. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. I am with special guest today. Kat from Austin, Texas. Hi, Kat. She's being so quiet. She's coming hi. in now. She's coming Hello. in to say hi. Hi. Coming uh, in hot. Coming hi. in hot. We've got <laughs> director Taylor Morton and writer Zeke Cam on the show today. They put together The Last Blockbuster, which is number one on Netflix. Ish. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. But you can get your copy. You got to go to bendblockbuster.com and, uh, and pick up a copy, pre-order. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on there. Yeah. bonus stuff that you won't get off netflix by the way jeremiah and i were talking before the interview before the program uh we raised a whole bunch of questions i'm hoping jeremiah if you remember i i remember most of the questions your mic went off i think i know i'm fine mm. and uh it's just amazing uh what uh what we have uh come across uh in terms of questions that that perplexed me as i was watching the movie and I don't know if this is the right time to bring those up yet, but I would like to address some of those. Well, you you tell well me. you're here now, Dr. D. You have to wait nine minutes. Up in the middle of it, yeah. Wait, hey, I was going to ask towards the end, but go ahead. You're well, already sure. here. All right. Well, <laughs> let, let, me, let me ask you. Uh, now, in the documentary, it talked about uh, this, this uh, profit sharing uh, deal uh, where she was able to get the videos for like two, three bucks, right? And they, I guess they were renting. She's renting them for what? Like three, four, five dollars. I can't remember what the typical pricing was. But how did that that sh that profit sharing thing work with the with the production companies? Uh, what was the percentage breakdown? Do you remember? Or did she ever hang tell on, you? Hang on, let me get somebody on the phone who understands that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pretty good idea. Um, the way it worked basically was that. VHS tapes and DVDs were prohibitively expensive for video stores because they were buying them at full retail, which at one time was $100 a yeah. tape. Yeah. And then even, you know, in the 90s, it was 25, 30 bucks. And so um, 
the big studios partnered with only Blockbuster and Hollywood Video had these deals and they would get them for a dollar or two per tape, but then they would share the profits back with the studio. So like Warner Brothers would say, here's a hundred copies of Superman four and you rent them a thousand times for four ninety nine or whatever. And I don't know the split. It was probably 50, 50. Cause that's what movie theaters do. Yeah. Uh, so then they would, you know, rent it, make 10,000 bucks, give the studio back five grand and they never had to buy the tapes. And then they could sell them as previously viewed tapes and keep all that money. Yeah. That's yeah. another question about the tapes and the DVDs. When the stores closed up until this last one, what happened to all of the VCR uh, tapes and DVDs? I mean, did they throw them in the trash? You can find every video now at Blockbuster and Ben at Blockbuster. They sent them all there. <laughs> You're never, they're never out of anything. They have an attached <laughs> warehouse. They have a huge warehouse out there. <laughs> now, people like me would go in and buy them because they would progressively mark them down in the final weeks. You know, they'd be 50% off, 75% off. And then like on the last day, they'd be like 90 to 95% off. And I would just scoop up DVDs for 15 cents. You know, I remember just buying stacks and stacks. And there was a time you could um, make a decent living buying them up and then selling them on e eBay. You oh, know, I never thought of that. at the That's end of video stores, idea. the beginning of eBay, there was an overlap <laughs> where you could do that. But um, wow. yeah, no, somebody, yeah, posted a, somebody posted a picture of a receipt I don't know why they still had the receipt from years ago when their blockbuster was closing down and it was just like uh sin of a woman 15 cents you know, whatever just all these, like, long receipt with all these movies for 15 yeah. cents each. yeah and the, the, yeah, the only response i have to that is Hoo -ha! so <laughs> Yeah. So um, Peter Morton that that founded Hard Rock Cafe used to be a, a good customer, by the way, I talked to him a lot. And he told me at one point, he said, we never made any money on the restaurant, the food or the or, or anything else, the, only on the T-shirts. That's what made all the money. And you guys talk about how she, you know, I, and there's a lot of scenes in the movie, the last blockbuster where Sandy's, you know, going through Costco or somewhere and loading up on the candy and the, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, and you mentioned that fifty percent of her, of her profits typically came from just that, and the other half was the videos, right? Yeah, used to be. Now yeah. it's like sixty percent online sales, like T-shirts and knit hats and things like that, and then the remaining forty is split between snacks and DVDs. Ah, wow. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's the thing, and everybody wants a picture in front of those signs. But I did notice that a few times I, I came up, I'm like, they're cracked, they're dirty. <laughs> I wonder if she's cleaned them since. And do, does she charge? Well, <laughs> it's for people to take risky. these photos. <laughs> it's risky beautiful. To try to clean that sign because it's fallen apart, and there's yeah. nobody factoring new blockbuster signs. Right. Know? Well, that's a beautiful thing about Photoshop. It. You can you yeah. can fix it up in Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wonder if there's a, a signage company in town that could could fix that for. Well, let's take this break. We'll come back. Oh yeah. Um, in such a fun hour to uh, this hour with uh, the the last blockbuster creators, director, writer Taylor Morton and writer Zeke Ham. Taylor is the director. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Use the commercial in yeah, the drop, spot here. Drop you that got over it. three, you got three times, it. please. All right. So we'll and put that commercial up. Yeah. Do you mind introing me as as uh, Zeke Cam writer producer? Sure, sure. Thanks, because um, nobody gives a fuck about writers. <laughs> I do, Zeke. I do. I do. I do. Okay. Um, Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I could probably go back and clean that up too. Three. Do it. Two. One. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We are talking with director uh, from the last blockbuster, director Taylor. Matt uh, Morton, excuse me, and writer producer Zeke Cam. Welcome Ooh. back, guys. Cat, Thanks. I've been dominating this hour. Jump in here. I'm sure Please. I do have a million yeah. questions, and they're I always, always good. Have ones. A they're, always, questions. they're good ones. They're always good ones. She's well, a, I just want to say, curious cat. I am a curious cat, and I don't have my blockbuster card anymore. Um, I'm surprised by that, but I did have a very intimate relationship with Blockbuster. Uh, uh oh. One year in my 20s, I was voluntarily celibate. <laughs> and instead of, instead of going out, and so 
instead of going out, I, we all worked at this restaurant and all my waitresses and waiters would go out and they'd beg me, cat, come out, just come out. And I'd be like, nope, I'm going out the back door because right behind the restaurant was a blockbuster. And that is who I dated for a year. And I was like, wow. I'm not touching them. Like, I just want to have a year where I'm just like with myself and blockbuster. And so Interesting. I a very intimate relationship. What, so I will tell you. What type of movies were you renting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That James one had the beaded on. curtain. <laughs> I was going to say, and by the way, you do recall in the movie, uh, they did talk a little bit about some of the escapades that went on yeah. inside the blockbuster uh, stores. Well, that wasn't me that year. <laughs> that <laughs> after, year. After that year. No, but I, I will say I watched the movie last night too. And um, it was, it's so good. It's so good. I'm going to be Thank just you. pumping out so much press for it and promotion for it because I think you guys did such a great job. I tend to look at movies from a side angle and like, this might not make sense. Maybe it does, but like a thickness and I just felt like you maintained, like you kept my attention and you you kept a really consistent engagement uh, the entire time. And I cared so much immediately from like the very beginning, I cared. And you got this part of me that when you cut, who, whoever had the idea of cutting together that scene where you hand the, the person, you know exactly what I'm gonna say, when you hand them the physical tape and which genius decided to cut that together so quickly, like one after another, that is where like my eyes started to water and I oh, could yeah. just feel it and the music <laughs> you had going. And then I think that the suspense was also happening because I think Sandy had gotten the phone call, but we didn't know what the phone call was for. So you have the suspense hanging over us. You kill us with this montage or whatever you call it, where you cut that together, where everyone's feeling a tape for the first time. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is too much. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I don't have a question for you. I mean, I do have questions. She wants to I compliment just, you. For, yeah. I just, well, it was Taylor's was idea surprised. to hand people a tape. Right in the beginning, he's like, I'm going to make a, do a mock-up of our tape. And Taylor is holding up a... Don't forget, hand it to him. Each person at the end of the interview, hand it to him. And I, I'm guessing Taylor had that idea because such an important part of the movie is that the physicalness. Yeah. Of it, you know, yeah. that that's what you lose when you go digital. There, of course, there's such an incredible convenience added, but you lose... that the, the, Scientifically your brain makes connections when you touch something. So there's a yeah. physical change mm -hmm. in your brain. And uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite parts of the movie. I'm so, so glad that that Taylor went to the trouble to do that. Yeah. And but, Taylor, tell him what the actual tape was that we were handing yeah. people. So this is the tape. Zeke has one that we sell. This one is the one that we handed to all the people. So Taylor is holding it up. You can hear oh, trying to open it up. Really oh, I forgot how hard they were to open. Oh, they were. They were. They were Jeremiah proof. We made sure. this. <laughs> we made this just to film, you know, to have a prop that represented blockbuster tapes. It's even got the previously viewed blockbuster yeah. stickers on it. And um, we were taking it around to interviews, and I handed it to somebody really early on, and their reaction was the same as our reaction, and that was where the idea came from of like oh, you get more out of handing someone this than any question you could ask them, you know, mm. that reaction. But uh, the fun thing is this actually is taped over a copy of Scent of the Woman. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. it, came up. it has since been, our movie has been put on here, but it was Scent of the Woman. Oh, that's crazy. Of a woman at the time that uh, Kevin Smith was holding it. But yeah, there is something really... Like right now I'm holding this and I feel yeah. like it's 1988 and I can go put this on and yeah. it's going to take me to another world of magic that you can't And that's get, what you touched on, Kat, yeah. there, that, uh, that that you're saying, Taylor, that when you, you when you shot those and everybody you hand it, you, their eyes, their re you can see their physical reaction. Yeah. Some, most of them, it seemed like it stunned them a little bit, right? Because yeah. they went to somewhere instantly, yeah. memory-wise, yeah. in their mind. And no one ever you know, we've now been interviewed a hundred times about this movie. No one's handed me anything. 
It's been <laughs> my, my a donut or something. A favorite <laughs> scene. A donut. Uh, yeah, a favorite scene of uh, that I I saw and because I could relate to it more times than I care to think of was when you pushed the eject button on the VCR, you pulled the tape out, and the videotape is stuck inside the machine. <laughs> that was that, a great scene. That was an accident. So but, we, we had to get a top loader machine. Yeah. You know that because that's what we all remember from the 80s and i got one off of ebay and they are not cheap and not easy to find now um and i got this one and it kind of works but it eats tapes i <laughs> found that out like Hungry. i tried to get a, a tape where you just took it out cleanly but that wasn't happening <laughs> so, oh it was a great though i love that it was a great fun. addition a very well, we special had, guest go ahead sorry well, we, i want to hear we more gotta give, we got to give props to our editor who yeah was just, he yeah. He really found, I, I, I'm really proud to say that the very first outline that I wrote for the story that I handed Taylor right near the beginning is almost identical to how the film turned out, which doesn't usually happen with documentaries. And it's not always a good thing, but in this case, like I really wanted it to be more like a, a, a fictional movie that you would see, like a scripted, Mm -hmm. without it being scripted like i wanted it to have all those beats and the tension and yeah. i wanted to really emotionally pull people through it and then you know we we were like well we'll see what happens and a lot of things changed along the way but the story and the emotions those are all still hitting the same spots in the movie and that's because of our editor tim he, he was, did such an amazing job he's such a good guy he got what we were trying to do right from the beginning it was such a great choice to go with him and when he cut that scene together of everyone getting the tapes, we were tearing up. We were yeah. like, wow. wow. And being that was there, in the first it, rough cut. The yeah. first rough cut he sent us had that scene in it. It was a little bit longer, but not only did he cut that scene in kind of the way it is in the final movie, but you were talking about the music, how perfect that, you know, the build underneath it. He played that. He's, he, I guess he's also a musician, but that's like what the one people wow. do. What's Tim's last name? Give it out. Give him a little shout out. Yeah. Gausen, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's never said it, so I don't know how to, know how to sound. <laughs> you spell it. By the way, for, for those people who are not familiar with VCRs and Blockbuster and what have you, a great television show to watch is the Goldbergs because that's their focus is the 80s and they're always showing their... Now, it's a front loader, okay? But they do show a top loader as well and uh, I, just, I just got a kick out of that. So you guys, uh, you know... Uh, you guys hit a nerve and it's a great one to hit too. The last blockbuster directed by Taylor Morton and writer and producer Zeke Cam. We'll be right back. This is our last break. Okay. Okay, guys, we got, uh, if you can stay with us for 45 or 50, 45 more minutes, 15 minutes. <laughs> You're like, oh my God. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, ready. Ready. I'm ready to go. I'm, out. I'm having enough fun to stay for 45 uh, minutes. Yeah, we re I really want to. Let's is it 45 let's, minutes of Kat telling us how good our movie is. Cause I'm here. Yes, for that. please. Yeah. 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 I, I want to dovetail off, dovetail off of what her, what she said. I, okay. Here we go. And Three. then let's give Kat some more yeah, questions. Sorry, absolutely. Kat. I'll let her do that. And let, let these guys do. talk. We're doing all the talking. I want to hear more about the movie right. from here. Here we guys. go. Three, two, one. You're live. Oh, that's me. Welcome that's back you. to the Jeremiah show. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving it to Kat. Uh, creators. These guys are the creators uh, on the show. Yeah, of uh, the number one movie on Netflix right now, but you've also got to pick up a DVD, cop DVD copy, uh, limited special edition, and I'm giving out all the information in the commercial break, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, I just wanted uh, to say to Cat's compliments, <laughs> and then Cat, you are going to take it away from here, uh, and that is that you got to be careful not to do that because we've already heard from one of the uh, uh, producers of this uh, program, their ego has gotten just a little bigger today. Uh, where they want specific credits uh, the way they're titled. And I, I find that fascinating how fame has, has overtaken them. And it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> you guys are terrific. I got to tell you, seriously, uh, with what you've put together, it's, it, it's fun to watch as well as what Kat was saying about it. You know, it just draws you in. Mm, yeah. So I was thinking about it um... I was thinking just about the the conversation of nostalgia and how, you know, the nerve that this film does hit. 
And I don't necessarily, I think that the pandemic and the fact that we've all been on lockdown and, and just disconnected from one another and really craving the human connection, I think helps you. But I also was thinking that, and I'm wondering your opinion on it. Do you feel that society was already kind of heading toward this in, in a sense of like, you know, kind of the rubber band kind of snapping back a little bit with, um, you know, just technology and the, the connection that we have with technology, but it's kind of missing that human aspect. I think it just kind of makes it even more concentrated in watching a film like this, where it's like, I would totally go back to a blockbuster video. I don't necessarily have to stream. Like, do you feel that in, in general, our society is kind of, you know, circling kind of back around wanting maybe things that are the longer, harder, more difficult way to get them. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's something we, that we thought about when we first started working on the movie that the pandemic puts a magnifying glass up to it, Yeah, but it was already there beforehand. You know, I, uh, the, the local, the town movie reviewer, Jared Rasek, who's in the film, he's mm -hmm. great and so good in the film. Uh, him and I started doing a podcast where we recorded it in Blockbuster before the, the pandemic. And so we were there a lot and mm -hmm. there was always people in the store, some locals, mm -hmm. other people visiting. It just was meaningful to people. I, I think when we first started, we didn't realize specifically what about it was meaningful. We were like, okay, the memories, the, we kept talking about the nostalgia a lot. And mm -hmm. we hit that in the film and I get that people, that's the first thing people react to. But at, the more we've thought about it, I think it's that it was something that was so integral to our lives, to our happiness, to our habits. Mm -hmm. um, and then it stopped one day, but there was no funeral for it. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that, that never happened. We just, it, it was important. We lost it and we forgot to care yeah. that we lost we it. All, we all rented a movie from Blockbuster for the last time and didn't know it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the sad thing. And, and that's part of one of the things that stuck out to me was the date night. Maybe you could talk a lot, a little bit about that. Um, Taylor, that, 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 that we went out on dates or with a family and that was part of the pre, you know, the event of, of going home and having dinner or going, going out dinner and then going home and watching a movie. That was a really special time. You're looking for a video. Your, your, your significant others looking for a video. You kind of get to get to, come together and show what you like and who you are without having to express that in a way. And that that's, I thought was really a poignant part in the film. And then the smell of the blockbuster and the videotapes. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about that, Taylor? I mean, what are your yeah. thoughts on? Well, the smell, that's another thing, just like the videotape, like holding it where it really stuck with me. The first time I went into blockbuster four and a half years ago, without ever thinking about making a movie or anything, just going in out of curiosity, the smell is what hit me first. And yeah. instantly that sense memory takes you back to, you know, 2002 and renting Gladiator or whatever. And the smell hasn't changed. Anybody who's been to this store can tell you the carpet, plastic, soda, candy, microwave popcorn, um, <laughs> <neighbors>. <laughs> all still there. And it's, it's very unique. You know, there is a blockbuster smell, which, you know, it's different than a Radio Shack smell or a Walmart smell or a Starbucks smell. They all have their own. Uh, but yeah, the date night thing, it's it was so huge back like when I was in my early 20s and had no money. Uh, sometimes I had a little bit of money, like four dollars to rent a movie. It was the only date you could do that like seemed legit it didn't seem like you were being cheap or you were you know this is a fun thing to do and the the thing that really came up every time we would talk to people about this and we talked to everybody about these memories and everything was it was never about the movie it was always about the experience and who you were with yeah. and going to the store and walking up and down the aisles like I don't remember the first movie like my wife and I definitely went to Blockbuster when we were dating I don't remember any of the movies we rented 
but I remember walking up and down the aisles and, oh, we agree that these are funny, but we've seen them. Let's rent something else or, you know, Sparked whatever. conversation, right? Spark conversation this, yeah. about common interests or disagreements, which is also fun in a movie place. Like, I'm never going to watch, don't go down the yeah. horror aisle. We're not going to get that. It's like, <laughs> great. I learned more from that, that interaction than five dinner dates would have done. So, right. Yeah, we would ask every, we had a list of questions and, you know, we would ask people specific questions based on answers that they gave us, but we had a general idea of questions we wanted to ask everybody. And one of the questions to just warm people up, you know, when we would start interviewing them was, what's your favorite movie that you would rent from Blockbuster? And every single person didn't answer Flash Gordon, which would have been my answers would be Flash Gordon. I rented it a million times. Um, <laughs> instead, every single person we interviewed would start with a story. Like, you know, you they'd say, my grandmother. So every Tuesday after school, my grandmother would pick me up because my parents both worked on Tuesdays and she would drive me in her station wagon to the, like, and almost never, sometimes never even getting to what their favorite movie was. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> And That's we realized really cool. when this happened every single time, we were like, this is deeper than just a fun movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. back back to that smell <laughs> thing at the beginning there, Taylor. Uh, I'm stuck <laughs> on that. But, but honestly, all of us here right now, think about this. How many things in your life does a smell bring back? All those memories, right? It bring, brings back, jolts you back to that time. I can think of, remember tape, cassettes i remember the plastic smell of those oh, when yeah. you'd get a new tape you know before dvds i don't even know if the dvd smelled as much as those tapes did and then blockbuster i mean there are not that many think of think of it you can probably count them on 10 fingers yeah. how many places would bring back will bring back that you know a rest restaurants you, yeah you know, they all kind of smell the same like how many places that we go out in public and socialize and and all that so i, I thought that was really cool to capture that and then that's the story. So what, what were some of the great stories that you, that maybe didn't make it into the movie that, that you, when you met customers of a blockbuster that you came across with the documentary? Uh, a lot of them went into the film. Um, yeah. You know, Ioni Sky, I can't, did we put in the whole Zappa thing? Ioni Sky? Uh, I can't it's remember. kind of in there. Cut. There's a part where she talks about um, her friends who never returned their videotapes in yeah. the late season. Yeah, 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 stressed out. That's <laughs> she's she's talking the about the Zappas. It's Dweezil oh. Zappa she's talking about. Uh. Uh, and she told this whole long story that was fast. I, first of all, I've always had a crush on this guy. Yeah. Hey, you're my age, how could you not? Yeah. But then when I met her in person to interview her, it was like, it just intensified. She's such an, a sweet, kind, like gentle person. And when, then she tells the story about how she'd go over to her friends, like her mom would yell, did you return the videos? Did you return the videos? But she'd go over to this Zappa's house and there'd be videos sitting on the countertop for weeks. And she'd be like, <laughs> I'm having a panic attack. Aren't you gonna return those? And she was a little girl. Aren't you gonna return those movies? So, and then, you know, and she'd that, talk, yeah, go ahead. And that also raises the question. Uh, and again, you may have to make a phone call in order to get an answer to this question. The, the difference between the breakdown between the movie rental revenue versus the uh, late fees and non rewind fees. I was told. I think Richard's going to open his own block. Like that, it sounds <laughs> like he's trying to get the. No, <laughs> yeah. At one point, I remember reading in some of our research, and it's don't hold me to it, but I think it was 25% of their revenue came from late fees and rewind fees. Which is hey, a huge percentage and sounds Zeke, totally right. Yeah. Zeke, do you owe any back, uh, Blockbuster? <laughs> Honestly, you no, here. I'm, have you, you have old Rindle? Like, no, I was more like I knew this guy. Like, it's, you got him back. That was the part I didn't like about running movies was I'd be like, uh, okay, I got to get this back before two. Uh, I don't want to be one minute late. How about you, Taylor? You got any old fees I, out there? I had a few in the heyday of Blockbuster. Um, and I had it like a system figured out because I really didn't have any money. So if I got late fees, I just couldn't we get another movie. one. Yeah. Like I'm just 
banned from Blockbuster until I can get a paycheck or something. Did it, uh, anybody jump around to different memberships like I did when I had late fees? Exactly, I was about to say when I had too many late fees at Blockbuster, I was going to Hollywood Video. And yeah. <laughs> Twenty <laughs> minutes out of your way. Flicks and picks that would um, I wouldn't get as many late fees because I wouldn't rent as many movies there, but also they would like kind of let it slide, you know. So like. You can pay the late fees next time. So I could still always rent a movie there. But um, one thing that happened during the course of making this movie is I started renting a bunch of movies because I was in there every week filming. <laughs> and I very specifically remember like a year and a half ago, I got my first late fee in probably two decades. Oh, that's awesome. And it almost felt good. Like yeah. I can frame it. <laughs> 75 cents doesn't bother me the way it did when I was a teenager. Mazel tov. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, the, the thing, I, I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona, and I always thought the best plan was after I've watched the movie, I put it in the car. And when we are out driving around, we'll swing by the blockbuster and we'll put it in the drop box or take it in and rent some more. The only problem is if it's summertime, you could end up ruining uh, that video uh, or even the, the Blu-ray DVD, although we were st strictly VCR uh, uh, watching. So yeah, I'm wondering how many, how many videotapes came back to damaged. <laughs> yeah, a lot. We shot, uh, yeah. we shot Sam Levine's interview at this really cool <laughs> rental store in LA that closed due to COVID um, called Eddie Brandt's Saturday Matinee. And they mostly do VHS. And they were one of the early places that would before you could even buy movies, they would tape stuff off of TV and rent it to people. Like we've got the oh, Oscars. Oh, on oh, yeah. oh the greatest oh, American oh. hero, the whole set. Yeah. <laughs> That's really you something that you want to read. report about OJ Simpson. We've got it right here. Oh uh, Lord. And so it was just a really cool place and they were great people. And that is one of the bonus features on the DVD is we went in depth about the history of that store a little bit. But yeah, I was going to ask, what right are the bonus right? features? Give us, tease us a little bit. Yeah. You got You got to pick up a copy. Yeah, put yeah, together yeah. a really awesome featurette um, oh, cool. with, of an interview with the the guy at, at Eddie Brandt. It's great. It's like it's a beautiful little film. It's great. So that's the next documentary. Was yeah, it's a whole nother documentary. The point I was getting to is that on the wall at that store, they have a melted VHS tape that was let in a car too long as a warning. Yeah. <laughs> if you bring back a tape like this, you could never get to rent here again. But it's you know, there's a shot of it in the bonus features, but it's ruined. And all it did is sit in a car. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. Hey, let me cool. tell you. Like a black. black 120, 130 check. degrees in Phoenix yeah. when it's only 105 or 10 outside. Yeah, it'll it'll melt it right down. By the way, um, uh, uh, did uh, did block. I know some video places probably had a wall of shame. Do you know if any of these blockbusters had something like that? Oh, we didn't ask that, did we? Uh -huh. In other words, you know, I bet until they, you, I bet they had like uh, inst what what were those uh, Polaroids of people like, <laughs> like when you have a bad <laughs> like when we you write a bad check yeah. and you're like not allowed to yeah. One of the things okay. we heard from former employees was that they used to write funny things in your profile. So like when they pull up your account on their computer, That's there hilarious. would be room for notes, and it would just say like you know, new this girl every week. <laughs> Yeah. What's up with this guy? He's read it Friday the 13th, part four. <laughs> <laughs> kind of yeah. So I'm sure they would put like crazy stuff. And then they would also have like joke accounts where people, you know, you could put in the account number and it would be Santa Claus's account. So if you wanted to put a late fee, like wave a late fee, you didn't wave it. You put it on Santa Claus's account. Oh, that's Why? funny. That's oh, man. These employees, man, they had the best time. Yeah. You know? It sounds Adam like Brody it. A huge star took time out of his crazy schedule to be in this movie because he had such fond memories of working at a blockbuster. Oh wow! No matter what your your what how you interacted with the blockbuster, I think we all had fond memories in some yeah. way, and that's what you guys have captured so well in this film, Richard. Uh, took about, about 10 minutes of time to talk about his melting VCR tape. So I have to now ask you three last questions. I'm sure a cat has like eight in, in rapid fire. Can you just answer them quickly and then we'll let you go and you go about your day. But we love having you guys here. I just love you guys too. You're so much fun. Um, we'll have to have you back and whatever you filmed that you're working on. Uh, but let me ask you real quick here. Um, and then we'll, I'll just ask both of you to go real quick. 
Did you guys always rewind your videotapes? These are important questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Okay, I good. afford that 25 cents. I had a Ferrari-shaped <laughs> videotape rewinder that cost $9.99 that I coveted. A Ferrari shit. Oh, that's a good idea. I, I didn't rewind return. a movie while you're watching your next movie. Do you remember, uh, Zeke, the last movie you rented at Blockbuster? I, I don't. I'm very sad to say I don't. If I think about it too much, I'll break down and start crying. <laughs> How about you, Taylor? Do you remember? Not the one in Bend, Oregon, but the last I block. should be able to remember, but it's been about a year. I did buy a VHS the other day when I was in there dropping off our DVDs, and it was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So I think that's- <laughs> and I'll okay, give you a little bit of trivia. The last, I don't know if it's true, but according to corporate Blockbuster, the very last video that was rented in their computer system was this is the end <laughs> wow wow Cute. That's, doesn't that's sound a, true but i know foreshadowing there cad do you have a question well i just i mean it, is it is it pure irony just the fact that this is on netflix and i'm so curious what that convert like did you guys go to netflix or did netflix come to you and like what was that conversation like oh you sold it to netflix our distributor took it to netflix i mean we thought from day one wouldn't it be hilarious? Yeah. We had two, on goals. My couch, <laughs> two five, goals. Sitting on my couch five minutes after he pitched me the idea, it we were like, Netflix. oh my God, can you imagine if this was on Netflix? <laughs> oh, that's the best soundbite right there. The other goal was that we had to finish the movie and get it on DVD while the store was still open so people could rent it at Blockbuster. And right. we've accomplished both. You can now rent it at Blockbuster and watch it on Netflix. But our distributor pitched it to them. And at first... They, they passed. They were like, no, we can't put a blockbuster thing on Netflix. And then we heard back a week later that their buyer, whoever was buying it, like was dreaming about it. Like all week yeah. he was having dreams yeah. about the movie and like, we have to put this, it's too good. It's, right? yeah. The irony is too good. Yeah. And so they came back to us <laughs> and said, yes, we would love to put it on Netflix. And then in the past few weeks, seeing how the internet has reacted, you know, to the, <laughs> the irony you can't buy that kind of publicity no. of everybody. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's so weird to think of Blockbuster Video as this underdog now. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, poor Blockbuster Netflix <laughs> you know, is spitting on their grave. But very ironic. It yeah. was as big as Walmart when Blockbuster was a thing. So don't feel and, too bad. And the thing is, is the, the good thing for Netflix is they weren't the bad guys here. They weren't the no. ones who turned it down. But you'll have to watch it to find out why. Yeah. Why it really oh, closed. We'll tease you with that. It's hilarious. But hopefully Netflix is watching it as well and seeing it as a cautionary tale because they currently are running their business like, you know, they're the top dogs and mm-hmm. they are. But that's kind of what got Blockbuster into some trouble back in the day. So, yeah, yeah. hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's yeah. not a vicious cycle. Hey, uh, tell us what you're working on right now, uh, Taylor, real quick. What, do you, what, what should we see? So what's next? Yeah, you? I'm doing this podcast, and then I'm going to go play some Nintendo, and then <laughs> <laughs> take a nap. That's good. Okay, that's, that's a good answer. Fair, fair answer. Honesty is always appreciated. And how about you? <laughs> um, I'm working on a couple, uh, developing a couple TV shows. I've done a lot of TV development in my, in my past, my sword past. Um, I, yeah, I wanted to get into now, which was awesome. Yeah, um, I wanted to get into all that stuff with you guys. We didn't have enough time, but go continue. Um, I'm hoping that everything will be safe. I got my first vaccine, so I'm hoping. Excellent. That, uh, I'm hoping soon every it'll be safe to be back in Blockbuster for hours at a time, and then Jared and I will reinstate the our podcast Unwinder. I was going to ask that uh, next. Is Unwinder is coming back. I hope so. I hope so. We'll see Good. how it goes. I know it's so much fun being there with Jared and inter- and being in the store for that long. So, but, the, uh, so also just developing some TV shows and looking forward to traveling again. Yeah, you, uh, uh, the store re- you were at the store with uh, Unwinder and people would stroll through and kind of yeah. sit down with you like like our friend Nicola Carbonelli. Hey, we also have a lot of listeners up in Bend. Believe it or not, uh, this is a radio show and a podcast and. People f- have listened to it up and been a lot of people. I get every week. Oh, I, nice. I get a lot of numbers. So it's cool. Hello, Ben Dorgan. And uh, glad to have you both on. Yeah. We'll have to have you back on your specific uh, new projects uh, a little bit later. Um, 
Thank hey, you can so I, can much. Can I pitch to, uh, to, to Zach uh, an idea for no. a program? No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, been, I've been pushing this for the last few weeks since we had uh, uh, our guest, uh, Daniel Emmett, on, uh, from The Voice. You know, the, we got all these talent shows, right? Well, I have an idea for a new talent show. And the title of the show is, You Can Do What? And that's basically it. <laughs> I love it. You might, your, your 80% you success go. rate <laughs> yeah, pitching right. might go down with you if you that's take right. that one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, guys, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, have a great week. Listen more and evolve. Thanks, gentlemen. Go rent and go, go buy a copy of uh, The Last Blockbuster at Bend. Let me give out the, give, why don't you give out the, the website for me? It'll be more fun that way, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get the okay. limited edition DVD Blu-ray combo directly from Blockbuster Video, shipped to you by a teenager in a Blockbuster uniform. <laughs> <laughs> you open the package just right, you get some of that Blockbuster smell, Ooh. and you can get it at bendblockbuster.com. Oh, but breathe that in at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. Goodbye. All right. That-